the Savior is the Word of God. You must remember that Jesus, the Word, became flesh. And so when you hold on to the Word of God, and when you speak that Word of God, over the mountain, it must move. Amen. The moment you are saved, it is not easy for you to run away. The moment you enter into the tent of God, it's not easy to run away from the tent of God. Even if you run out, when you are sleeping, when you're all alone, He knocks at the door. Your conscience begins to speak to you to come back to the altar of your salvation. Amen. You know why? He rose and conquered the grave for your sins and my sins. He rose from the grave that you can become more than an overcomer. Amen. Amen. But don't let the devil rob the day. Don't let obstacles make you feel down. Let Jesus, the word of God, that you have embraced, conquer the grave. The grave is what, you know, not just in the inside there. You know, grave is like people, you know, walking around. Only in the grave you see people crying, yeah? You don't see people laughing, right, in the grave. Only mad men. Yeah? So, you know, in the grave, you know, people cry. When you are down, when you are sorrowful, when there is a storm, sometimes we are like that. No, you must conquer the grave. The, the devil wants to bring you to the grave. Even when you're alive, he wants you to walk in the grave. So don't walk in that grave. Come out strong. Come out powerful. Only by the truth of the Word of God. When you buy the Word of God, when you buy the truth of the Word of God, you will be blessed. Amen. Oh, I like to preach that. You know. Get excited, yeah? Oh. But don't just get excited and you go home and, oh, what's up, child? Yeah, you've got to be excited all the time. My title to you is, Buy the Truth. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 23, there's something precious about truth. Truth is one of the foundational principles of God's kingdom. Because God is truth. Amen? Now, Psalms 119, verse 12, please. Notice that there is truth, there's a fact, yeah? And there is truth that is called revelation. Okay? Now, in this scriptures here, actually we study, yeah? The English and the Greek is normally the same. But the context of the statement shows that many times in Scripture, when we refer to truth, the truth, the meaning is not merely ethical truth. Catch what I'm saying? When we talk in the Scripture, the meaning is not normally ethical truth. But truth in all its fullness and scope as embodied in Jesus Christ. Okay? Because many people, when they speak truth, they only talk about ethical truth. But when we are talking about the biblical truth, it is the fullness and the scope as embodied in Jesus Christ. It means the whole thing, everything. He was the perfect expression of the truth, Jesus. Yeah? Okay, now, jump quickly to John chapter 18. John 18, please. Verse 37. Remember, the high priests were holding the Torah, but they made it into traditions. But Jesus said, I came to bear witness, wow, to the truth. He is the truth, man. Hallelujah. That's why you know, today's Christian and today's church must wake up. They bring all kinds of teaching into the church, and sometimes it's not based on the word. It's not enough. We as Christians must base the word on the word, not based on any other thing, but on Jesus. If you are of the truth, you will listen to the voice of the Lord. Means when you are struggling with your own affairs, when you are struggling with your issues, when you are struggling with those things, listen to the voice of the Lord. There are things that you must let go that you can embrace the truth. 
And for you to embrace the truth, sometimes it will offend you yourself. So I prefer you offend yourself and embrace the truth so that you will be set free. The Bible says that when you know the truth, you are free because you know the truth. Uh, we will go into the scripture later on. John 14 verse 6 please. It means there is no going to anybody else except to, the, to Jesus. And through Jesus, you can reach the Father. I don't care which preacher preached to you, which father preached to you. But if he doesn't preach this truth, he is not in line with the word of God. You know, be who you are and be proud of who you are and bring Jesus out. Hallelujah. Exciting, yeah? You got to be you know, like that. Problems will run away from you, scared of you, you know. The moment you stand on the word, problems are afraid of you. You say, try me, come on, try me. Ah. Plus, they think twice before he try you. And when he try you, don't run away. You say, come on, I'll take you on. Huh. Fight like a winner. Overcome the problem and give glory to Jesus. Now, John 8, 32, please. Throughout scripture and until our present day, many people have a problem with truth. In fact, it is not politically correct today to say that there is even such a thing as absolute truth. Yeah, if you listen to my statement, uh, today, yeah, in today's term, yeah, it is not politically correct to say that there is even such a thing as absolute truth. Because many people don't embrace the truth anymore. They embrace what they want to embrace as truth. Even in families, yeah, in small units, yeah, your family, yeah, sometimes you don't believe in absolute truth. You know, you believe in your own truth. These are reflected in these ways, okay? These truths are reflected in often heard statements like this. No one has the right to tell me what's wrong. You catch what I'm saying? No one has the right to tell me what's wrong. It's wrong to impose your beliefs or morals on someone else. Christians today are like that. That's wrong. It's being banned. And we as Christians have embraced all those things in the church. We have neglected what Jesus is saying. We must embrace what Jesus is saying. These things, I'm going to tell you, and I will give you some more points because maybe you are like that also. So you just change, yeah? That's easy, okay? It's wrong to impose your belief that I said or morals on someone else. Third one, I have the right to do whatever I want if I'm not hurting anyone. Logic, right? But not absolute truth. You have to do whatever you think is right. Sometimes pastors also tell people like that. Wrong, you know? You have to do what the Bible says you have to do. Do it. That's it. Finish. Because we don't want to offend one another. So that you will be happy with me and I'm happy with you. And so we can have a goody-goody church. But you know, Jesus is not here to please you or me. He's here to tell you the truth. And when you embrace the truth, you are free from all these burdens. I like some of your attitudes, you know. You don't care what people think, you just do what you want to do. That's a good attitude. But I hope you did it for the word of God. But, he, but he's good, you know. You know, people tell me that. Right? Well, stand on the word, don't, not on what you want. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I have the right to do what I think, okay, is right. Then the other one is this you have your value system, and I have my mind, and I have mine. Okay, you, you, me, me. You have your value system. In my family, we have a value system. We do this way. Now let me ask you, whose doctrine are you following? You say, Jesus, are you sure? If Jesus is your doctrine and my doctrine, how come different? Ah, that's why you know you want your miracle, you want breakthrough. Doctrine, doctrine, doctrine. 